In the following video, units are simulating a response to the report of a vehicle accident with entrapment involving a car and a school bus. This means that the calls received by the 911 center indicate that someone is unable to get out of their vehicle, either due to the impact or the serious nature of their injuries. Upon arrival, personnel will perform a quick scene survey and a scene size up. They will survey the scene for any hazards that might exist for victims and fire department personnel. These might include power lines or utility poles involved in the incident, fuel or other hazardous materials that have spilled or are still actively leaking, along with a number of other items. This information will be transmitted via radio to the communications center for other responding units as part of the complete scene size up. Along with hazard information, the size up information to be transmitted will include the number and type of vehicles, the number of potential patients, and will either confirm or deny the existence of anyone trapped in their vehicle. Transmitting this information across the assigned radio talk group paints a picture of the ongoing incident for personnel that have not yet arrived. While the officer is completing these tasks, and once confirmation of a trapped victim occurs, the remaining personnel will begin to prepare the scene for the extrication operation and will also begin to make contact with the victims. This will include stabilizing the vehicle using wooden cribbing or a tension buttress stabilization system, disconnecting power from all vehicles involved, establishing some form of fire suppression capability, either with fire extinguishers or a charged hose line, and most importantly, making contact with patients to triage and determine the degree to which they are trapped. Disconnecting the power to the vehicle is an important step as it helps to reduce hazards such as fires along with removing power from vehicle safety systems. Typically, personnel will accomplish this by removing or cutting the cables attached to the vehicle's battery. As was mentioned previously, personnel will also address potential fire suppression needs. Usually this will be accomplished by putting into operation a charged hose line. At least one firefighter will be assigned to this task, stretching the line, bleeding out the air, and preparing to extinguish any fires that might result from the accident. In some cases, it may only require minimal work by crews to free a patient, and in others, it may require an extensive operation utilizing a variety of tools and techniques to remove the victim from the vehicle or the vehicle from around the victim. Once the vehicle is stabilized, fire protection needs are addressed, power has been disconnected, and EMS personnel have determined by triage who will need to be removed first, the actual extrication operation can begin. At the same time, EMS personnel will begin to assess and stabilize patients from both outside and inside the vehicles. In Brownsburg, the latter company carries all extrication tools and equipment. While all fire and EMS personnel receive some level of training in extrication operations, personnel assigned to the latter company have additional training requirements that allow them to specialize in these types of incidents. Another item that must be addressed as extrication operations begin is the removal of all remaining glass in the vehicle. Personnel do this so that the glass does not become a hazard later. Generally coordinated with this is the beginning of the process to systematically remove or displace parts of the vehicle. Doors will typically be removed first, utilizing hydraulic spreaders, commonly referred to as the jaws of life, along with hydraulic cutters, reciprocating saws, as well as a vast array of other tools. If removing the doors does not create enough space or access for patient removal, personnel will typically move on to removing either a portion or the entire roof of the vehicle. Training that personnel receive allow a lot of these operations to flow seamlessly from one to another if necessary, and sometimes to run simultaneously. As a side note, while personnel are operating tools, officers are constantly maintaining a watchful eye for the safety of personnel and patients. While many modern vehicle safety features work to protect occupants during a crash, those same safety features can become serious hazards for personnel operating around or in the cars. Things like undeployed airbags and seatbelt pretensioners, 
along with compressed gas cylinders hidden inside vehicle trim, can present real issues as personnel begin to push, pry, and cut the vehicle to access and remove victims. Personnel are trained to quickly recognize these features and the potential hazards they represent, as well as methods to mitigate them if necessary. Once all of the victims are removed from the vehicle, personnel will place them in an ambulance, stabilizing and providing treatment as necessary, while transporting them to a hospital for definitive care. Remaining personnel will address any remaining hazards, gather equipment, and prepare for the next call.